Are you totally different when it comes to sex and copulation? Have you judged yourself out of receiving pleasure? Have you judged yourself into receiving pleasure in certain ways and excluded other ways? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, pleasure diva and body whisperer, Milica Yelenich. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. You were obviously having a very interesting day that you would choose to be on here playing with Catherine McIntosh and I. I want to congratulate you guys for choosing everything that you chose today that brought you here in this very moment to listen to this crazy, fun episode. It is going to be uh, an interesting conversation for sure, um, mostly because Catherine gave me one one liner, which I love, which also often leads to who knows what else. It was actually a two-liner, <laughs> but it was the pleasure of possibilities, how to enjoy everything in your life now and beyond. And I was like, yes. We can talk about this for an hour, for sure. We can talk about this for three days. I know that Catherine can talk about possibilities for days because she has a class that is creating your life. Uh, I, I keep changing the name of it, Catherine, but creating your life without judgment and creating your life into possibilities. I keep changing the name of it. <laughs> so, so I'm like, hey, just come to Catherine's class. You don't know what the name will be when the day you show up, but... They'll be named and you'll show up and it's going to be good. <laughs> so, um, oh. so for for those of you who um, have been avid listeners of Inspired Choices Network uh, or listened to us uh, in the past, you might have actually heard Catherine's show. She had a show with Corey Michelle. Um, was that about a year or two ago? I think you guys had a show. So you guys, uh, you can actually yeah, it was find about two Catherine. Year, two years ago. Wow. You can find a whole bunch of Catherine and Corey's shows in the in the archives. They're there. You can look for them. So, um, yeah. So if if you're if you love this episode with Catherine and, and you'd like more of Catherine, you can find uh, some episodes there. And you can also join her at any number of her classes going on in the world, including she's coming to Toronto and she's going to be in other parts of Canada as well, Edmonton at the beginning of November, and then Toronto, uh, November 22nd, 23rd-ish, something like that. We have uh, we have this, we're just going to have this amazing class. I'm not even sure what it's going to be called by the time you get here, Catherine, but we're excited that you're <laughs> going to be showing up and uh, <laughs> that we're going to be playing with possibilities. So um, for those of you, too, who don't know Catherine, um, I actually said to somebody today, I can't remember, it was one of my clients, and they said, um, so who is this Catherine woman you're talking about, this no judgment thing? I'm like, well, it's not no judgment anymore, it's another name, but um, I said she's a body worker, like she's studied body work, and that's actually funny, because you don't really have a lot of that in your um, in your bio, but I know from talking to you before that you actually did, you studied body work, and you have a background uh, in working magic with bodies, so you know it's not something that you're just you're just like eh, whatever. I'm just going to pretend like I know something. You know, you know not just from education, but you know from being um, being being it and bringing it to the world and facilitating it. Uh, so to me, I was like, uh, how do I describe Catherine? I would describe Catherine as um, if my body was in pain and my mom wasn't around. Uh, I would try and find Catherine, if that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> so they were like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much the energy I can give you on that. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so that was pretty funny. It was a pretty funny conversation to have. Um, it kind of like blew their mind. They're like, you'd actually go to some? I'm like, yes, I would go to somebody. And I'm very picky. So, yeah, there you go. So... Um, well, Catherine was, how awesome is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and so yeah, I'm sure that um, I, my body is going to be like, I'd like a session with Catherine. So, Catherine was 
born and raised in the Midwest, because that's where all all good Christian girls are raised, right? That's <laughs> where you're supposed to be in the Midwest. Because the naughty girls are raised that... on the East Coast, or the yeah, the Midwest is for the good girls. So you change something about that huh? reality. That's right. And that... Well, and it. Go ahead. Yeah, it's you know it's funny because I grew up with this intuitive background in a Catholic family, so you know I I just thought it was crazy. <laughs> I didn't think it was a you know something that would contribute to people, you know, changing their lives, changing their bodies, changing their businesses, changing everything you know on the planet. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So. I'd like to uh, talk about these possibilities um, that, you know, people talk about possibilities a lot. Um, Maybe it's because of what I'm choosing in my life. I'm in a lot of conversation about possibilities, and I don't hear a lot of people actually talking about the pleasure of possibilities. So I like that you threw those two together. Um, What I notice is sometimes even when people talk about possibilities, they get excited, and then there's also this, like, daunting thing that goes on with it it's like oh oh okay there's possibilities oh my god my world might open up oh i don't know what i can do with that what am i going to do there's going to be so many choices how do i choose what do i do and they just they go into a bit of possibilities can be a bit of a like a beyond in their world right so having pleasure with possibilities i'm wondering what your awareness was when you chose that title yeah, well, so check this out. So most people have a very familiar relationship with pain, right? And so we all mm-hmm. know that when we hit too much pain in our lives, we what? We go to put our hand on a hot burning stove, we know immediately to take the hand off the stove. Our body starts hurting, we know we need to take action and do something, right? So we're all familiar with pain, and we're also all familiar that we have like a, a what I call a pain threshold, right? Like a limitation as to how much pain we're actually willing to (laughs) withstand before we start screaming bloody murder, right? And (laughs) so, but here's the thing is most people don't really talk about, there's a couple of, you know, people on the planet that have talked about it is we also all have what I call a pleasure threshold. So if you start, receiving too much pleasure, if you have 50 orgasms in one night, if you, you know, make or create or win $100,000, you know, the lottery is a great example. People who have been broke most of their lives are living paycheck to paycheck, and all of a sudden they win the lottery. Most statistics, I think people lose their wealth that they won from a lottery within five years. And so what I sort of attribute to that is one, lack of information, lack of knowledge, lack of knowing what to do with that money, but also is they've, they've, they've basically broken through their ceiling of pleasure, right? <laughs> and they've broken through that ceiling of pleasure, and then we, so they dumb it back down. They go back to what I refer to as somebody's baseline. Right. So most of us are familiar with our baseline, which is like, you know, oh, my baseline is I live paycheck paycheck to paycheck or my baseline is that on nights that things are tough, I tend to fight with my spouse or my baseline is I'm tired every night when I come home. Right. And so once people start to sort of get off of their baseline and start to receive more pleasure, create more money, have more joy, have more kindness in their life, they go into this thing in their brain and in their bodies that they go, oh, my God, what do I do with this? Is this wrong? Is this okay? Is that like I know I'm I'm a laugher. I love laughing, and if you guys have ever mm-hmm. heard my shows or, you know, been on my classes, you know that I like to laugh, right? And there have been moments where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm laughing so loud, people must think I'm high or on drugs or drunk or whatever it is. And so then we find these ways to diminish the enjoyment of the pleasure, And what I, you know, think is really cool is what if we embraced the pleasure of possibilities? Because the truth is, right, 
if we're functioning from pain, a lot of times we can only see two choices, two possibilities. If we start to function from pleasure, the amount of possibilities that become available to us can be infinite. Mm -hmm. And when what we know about most human beings is if they have too many choices in their life, they won't choose anything. Yeah, overwhelm, right? Yeah. Overwhelm or whatever that is. So it, yeah, it's, it, yeah, and overwhelm is kind of a joke too. But I look at yeah, even if we break it down to kids, and you give kids, for example, um, if you're raising them in one of those environments where you've got three choices and only three choices, um, they they tend to pick A, B, or C, unless they're unusual and they're like, no, none of those are for me. I'd like something else. But uh, a lot of kids will go, oh, I've got three choices. Okay, A, B, or C. I can deal with those three. Um, if you're like, you can pick anything you desire, they're like, what, what, what? I was uh, playing yeah. with a three, yeah, I was playing with a little girl, and well, she's in a little girl body the other night, and I was giving her some choices of, of things, about 20 or 50, and then, you know, it's like, and what else? And she, her whole face was like, whoa, you're like messing with me. There's something else? My mommy gives me two choices, bed or trouble. And you're giving me more choices? I don't know what to do with myself. And yeah, it's it's pretty cute to like to actually blow people's worlds open with possibility. Well, even you know, in the business world and in the marketing world, they teach you don't give people too many choices, <laughs> right? Because if you give people too many choices, they go, oh my gosh, I don't know what to choose. And so, check this out, right? Like I I give this analogy a lot. Is I um got married very young when I was 25 and the day after I got married this five star hotel in Quito Ecuador the wedding was all predominantly in Spanish most of the attendees were you know Spanish speaking natives and we went to this buffet the next day at at the hotel with all of the out of town guests and most of them were my family and they had traveled from all over the world to come to Quito, Ecuador to <laughs> witness my first wedding, <laughs> which didn't last very long. Go figure. And we had this giant gourmet buffet, like literally eight tables of possibilities. So, wow. you know, like a seafood buffet, a meat buffet, a pork buffet, dessert buffet, like a gourmet sushi. I mean, it was like literally, and every single choice was amazing and beautiful. But guess what most people do with buffets? So whether it's a five-star buffet or just like your local buffet, is most people will go to a buffet and instead of enjoying the idea that they have so many choices to choose from, they will over choose and then get sick, yeah. right? Overeat. Like I remember as a kid, I was 13, 14, I went to a buffet and it was my first time ever in my life being to a buffet, like all you can eat buffet. And I ate all my body could eat and then I got sick, <laughs> right? And my body literally could not tolerate any food. So what, what tends to happen is we have all these choices and we get overwhelmed, right? So we start to overeat or overindulge and therefore making ourselves sick or freaked out or stressed out by all of the possible choices. And so I know, you know, so what I would say to that is what if instead of going into overwhelm, you could actually delight in the pleasure of all of the possibilities and not have to choose all of them all at once. <laughs> Oh, well, there's a concept. So I don't have to have 35 cakes all at once. There is an idea. I, I love, like, dessert buffets. That would be that would be the thing where I'm just like, oh, yeah, I can have seven plates of dessert. Of course I can because they're all here. And then uh, yeah, my body's like, wow, what were you thinking? It's, it's a funny thing because when – what I've noticed is that when there are so many choices and there's so many possibilities available to us, um, I've noticed that a lot of people have have this like weird thing with with being present with it, right? It's like so. I'm wondering like what can we choose to actually be present with all the possibilities of the universe that are available, so that we can actually choose them. 
Yeah, well, so let me give an analogy because it might help. Is So imagine you go to a fancy car lot, and you can choose from test driving a Lamborghini, a Porsche, a Pinto, <laughs> you know, a Ford Explorer. <laughs> like, like you could literally, an Aston Martin, a Maserati, like all of a sudden you're like, ooh, okay, so let me try the Lamborghini first. And you go for a test drive in the Lamborghini and you come back and you're like, wow, that, I now know what that feels like to drive that car. And then you're like, okay, what else do I want to try on? Ooh, let me try the Porsche, right? And then you go, ooh, okay, I know what that feels like. And then you come back and you're like, let me try the Ferrari. So what happens is, is what would it look like if you didn't have, because there's no way to drive a Lamborghini and a Porsche simultaneously. There's just no way, right? That we know of. Unless yeah. you got like yeah. a stunt double. <laughs> so it literally is about, wow, which one do I want to choose right now? Allow your body to totally indulge, embrace, delight in every moment of that choice. And then like choose again. Which then and then choose again. To the eye. Yeah. So and then and choose again, right? So then I'm wondering. So indulge in that choice in the moment. You can't ride a Lamborghini and a, and a Maserati at the same time. But what about when it comes to people? Like as love, because this is the pleasure zone, Catherine. What about lovers? So if you're uh, going for the well, or, orgy or threesome, tell me how how can you play with that in a, a way that you you have the answer to this, right, Catherine? Yeah, since I've had so many threesomes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Not at all, just for just for the record. <laughs> Not at all. I'm a virgin to threesomes. So but what I would say about it is I like I've had a lot of friends that, that do choose multiple partners or do choose multiple experiences with multiple people at the same time. And what I've seen is sometimes in some cases people can create drama, which is what? Oh my god, that's too much pleasure. Oh my god that is not of this reality oh my god we're gonna have to fight for attention right verse mm -hmm. is what would it be like to constantly break through your own threshold and your own limitation and see what you can create and what I would say to that Melita is that every single person that experience, that breaking through the boundaries, that breaking through the barriers is going to look and feel different in everybody's body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would. But what definitely. is familiar in everybody's body is shutdown and contraction. Most people know shutdown and contraction really well. So pleasure is really different for everybody. And more of a foreign uh, energy, right? If, if it's something that we've maybe had a glimpse at, like you're saying, the contraction is, I can say for certain that everybody I know has had uh, the experience of contraction in their life. And when when I ask people, when was the last time you experienced pleasure? So many people have no idea even what I'm – they're like, what do you mean? Like, I'm like, pleasure, you know, when your body experienced, like, any kind of sense of pleasure, whether it was eating or putting on clothes or having sex or running, when did your body experience pleasure the last time? And so many people don't actually remember when that was or if that was, uh, which fascinates me that, that we have an option called pleasure and we're not choosing it. So how do we become, how can we become more familiar with the energy of pleasure than uh, you were referring earlier and there was, I'm just going to see what that word was, the pleasure threshold, right? If you have a pleasure threshold, you can't go beyond it. So, and then we have this um, pain, you were talking about like this kind of uh, foundation of, of like pain that we're familiar with. So we keep going back to it. So I'm wondering what are some things, and maybe when we come back from break, we can give some tools. Um, you know, you, you talked about like trying on one car at a time and that sort of thing. I wonder if there's some more tools we can share with the audience about how to um, start to move away from your, your maybe your foundation of, of pain and being willing to create a new foundation of pleasure of possibilities. 
So, yeah, if you'd like to talk about that when we come back from break. Absolutely. Awesome. So let's head to break, and when we come back, we will delve into that topic here on The Pleasure Zone. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How long have you been waiting to uncloak your magic? To allow the magic within you to rise and catalyze into an extraordinary life deep down you know is possible. Live Your Magic is a two and a half day experience that will move you beyond your mind, ignite your body and activate the magic that is you. If you are ready to radically tap into your desires, generate more aliveness in your body and your life, then join us at a Live Your Magic event somewhere in the world. Go to megansolito.com and click on events to learn more today. That's M-E-G-A-N-S-I-L-L-I-T-O. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone. I was in a moment laughing in the chat room to myself, and then I realized, wow, the show's back on. (laughs) Welcome back to the show, everyone. I usually don't get all distracted by the chat room, and I was. And so before we went to break, Catherine, the big question was, what can we choose, um, and what are some tools we can use to move beyond the pain plateau or the pain foundation that we create as pain, that's so familiar to us and how can we choose um, to create a new sort of foundation in our life that would have more of the resonance of pleasure or the pleasure of possibilities? Well, lo and behold, wouldn't you know it would be a question. So one of my favorite tools from Access Consciousness, right, is, is one to function from the question, but just simply recognizing that you're at your limit Asking what else is possible, right, or how does it get any better than this literally can begin to open up a totally new possibility, right? And so if you, like, hit your pleasure threshold, another thing is to breathe, right, to go, okay. I can do this, right? And and one of the tools from Access also is just to continue to expand your energy out and out and out and out and out. Because the more you expand your energy out, the more awareness you can have and then the more energies can contribute to you. What happens is when, when we hit that pleasure threshold, Without even knowing it, we unconsciously contract our energy or put up our barriers or put up our walls. And so just a quick story. So I was in Bimini a couple of years ago doing a retreat and probably one of the more phenomenal retreats. I'm hoping to create a retreat there again for the no judgment diet. Yeah, baby. Right. And, cool. and the no judgment diet really is the brand. And then there's all of these events, one which will be in Toronto um, and in Edmonton and all over all over the world and Hawaii swimming with dolphins. So on this particular mm. retreat, we're swimming with dolphins on a catamaran and really like getting people to truly embody in their bodies infinite possibility. And there was a guy not part of the retreat. And 
So the retreat owners were like, hey, we just want to warn you, you guys are towards the end of the season, we might not have a lot of, or beginning of the season, we might not have a lot of dolphins. And I was like, watch, right? So (laughs) pulling energy, talking to the dolphins, asking them if they wanted to come play, you know, all this stuff. And so day like four or five, we run into this guy in his kayak. And we had been seeing dolphins every day. And the retreat owners were like, wow, you guys are really different. And we're like, yep. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we are. (laughs) Right? Because we know we can talk to things on the planet to create a different possibility. And so... You know, this guy, not in this retreat, was kayaking, and his first thing that he said, he was so excited and so happy that dolphins were swimming swimming all around him. And all of a sudden, he goes, it doesn't get any better than this. And I'm sitting on the edge of the balcony of the (laughs) catamaran, and I'm like, how does it? And he says again, he's like, it doesn't get any better. And every time he said it, the dolphins went away from him. Wow. And I was like, oh, my God, like, like, literally, that is an example that that I can, you know, sort of talk about is that it doesn't get any better than this. In college, I won $300 at, you know, um, I had a contest, right? I won the $300. I wasn't willing to have the $300. So I blew it on alcohol that night and treated all my friends. Right. And so we have these moments where, where, yeah, it was a fun night, right? (laughs) We have these moments where we will receive something that's beyond what we can comprehend and then we'll do everything to sabotage it rather than enjoy the having of it. Right. And so for me, yeah, we're so cute. I I attribute, you know, I always say, oh, my God, I was having a bland, a bland, a blonde moment, (laughs) right? A bland, blonde moment, yes. But a bland, blonde moment. So it literally is this energy of what else is possible? What else is possible? So if you hit your pleasure threshold, it's like, wow, if I actually break through the ceiling of my limitation, will I survive? Yes. Am I going to die? No. Now, if you're going to get the answer, you're going to die, you might want to bring it down, right? So <laughs> unless you're up for dying that is, day, right? Unless you're up for dying that day. So it's, it's literally a lie that that we can't ha- – like, it's a lie that there is such a thing as too much pleasure, Right. But how often do we hear people in subtle or not so subtle ways convince themselves that there is such a thing as too much money, too much pleasure, too much joy, too much possibility? Yes, all the time. I hear it all the time. And it's so uh, it's like it's become so part of our conversation. Somebody might say good morning and all of a sudden uh, the next thing hey, how's the day? The day's great. Can't get any better than this. I'm like, wow, I'm three sentences into the day and people are already saying that the day can't get any better. What? It's wild. Like, it's become so second nature to limit our pleasure, our pleasure, you know, like our willingness to receive pleasure. We're so much more willing to cut it off right at the feet, castrate the crap out of pleasure. It's like, pleasures walking around going but i want to give you orgasms and we're all like no we've got to castrate you we have to it's kind of sad right (laughs) right and so it's like what would you know we are on the pleasure zone (laughs) so what would (laughs) like the pleasure zone of possibilities be like for everybody listening like what if you know you could have so much joy in your business so much joy in your sex life, so much joy in your personal and professional relationships that you literally were this energy of a walking, talking orgasm, right? And so often mm-hmm. our brains go, wait, but that's not possible. And so always my retort is, well, what else is possible? If you've decided that's yeah. not possible, you're correct, right? I'm correct in going, well, I know it is possible. And so it's constantly, rather than getting discouraged by people that want to, you know, talk, oh, well, there's three sentences into the day and they're already saying it doesn't get any better than this. 
I go, wow, there's three sentences into the day, and their point of view is it doesn't get any better. Great. I am not going to spend any more time and energy, but I'm also not going to come down to a level. I'm going to say, well, you can have that. I'm going to have my what else is possible, and feel free to join me at any time. Yeah. That is Feel that free is to awesome. come play at any time if you decide you want more pleasure, if you want more possibilities, if you want more money, if you want more joy in every area of your life. And how, right, and and really, have... what we. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was I was just playing with the the thought uh, in my head of, you know, so we've got we could have those conversations like people I hear having all the time. Oh, can't get any better. And um, like you're saying, like you're, you're moving on with your day, and you're like, cool. Their point of view is their point of view, and that's going to create what that's creating for them. And I'm not falling down that rabbit hole, and. It's. It would be um, so. It's so curious and interesting to me that when you're being the energy that you're choosing, which is the, okay, cool, you you know, which is allowance, basically. Okay, cool, that's your point of view. Can't get any better. I'm choosing something different, um, and you know, and being the invitation for people to step up and choose it. It's for me. My body can stay like lit up and literally like turned on. Uh, for hours and hours and hours in the day, um, and people will ask, like, I don't know, you mu-, and I love when people throw this on me. You must be exhausted. You just did 12 hours of body work. I'm like, I'm lit up actually, but thanks, thanks. You might have been, and I'm not. And um, it's it's funny because it's often where where you know when we are when we are starting to be that invitation of there's something else possible. People do get curious and they're not sure what's going on, right? So there's often it can often lead to conversation and it can lead to inviting people into more literally just being uh yourself and walking around in the world and not diving down that hole, right? So if you find yourself diving down holes all the time, what if you like what if we just notice before the hole gets there, before we're like just about to jump down the rabbit hole with everybody and there it doesn't get any better than this day's, um, we notice it and we're like, hey, that's true for you, like you were saying. And then we kind of go, oh, okay, now what can I choose? And what if I just go be mischievous, fun, and the mischievous, fun self I be, my most fun mischief is to be like, be outrageously me and see what that changes in people's worlds, um, you know, saying saying things. And I, I know I'm compelled. I'm often, I feel like compelled, like the energy is so in my face, like, okay, you know, if I say this, is this going to contribute something to the planet? And often it will. So, you know, funny things will come out of my mouth, even though they're completely inappropriate. And that can actually change a day from being what people are thinking is, can't get any better than this to being the invitation to a possibility that it could get any better. Just kind of being you, right? Being radically crazy you can change something and be that invitation to change the threshold, right? A new threshold of pleasure. I just went on a rant there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. And well and what, what, you know, is so at least for me, is is the you know, someone's saying in the chat, being oneself is one of life's greatest pleasures. Yeah, and guess what? We are fortunate enough to have a body. You know, you're a body worker. I'm a body worker. And, yeah, it's interesting in the beginning when you said, no, most people don't know you're a body worker, Catherine. I'm like, well, I've been a body worker for 20 years, but not from this reality standpoint, right? I just am so aware of the conversations every single body on the planet wants to have and every conversation is different but the the sort of the not the crux but the 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 catalyst of pleasure is having a body right the catalyst of pleasure is oh my god the body is the one that gets the pleasure the mind is (laughs) is the one that likes to convince the body that there's a limitation but if you ask mm-hmm. the body if it has a limitation on pleasure, what do you get? My body has no limitation on pleasure. 
Right. Uh, the mind, yeah. aha, <laughs> right? That's oh, yeah, my little... mind will decide. You've had three orgasms now. That's enough. You've got other things to do today. Oh, you've got the laundry to do. Like your mind will kick in with all kinds of excuses to stop receiving more pleasure, whatever that way right. is, right? We've got obligations, right? <laughs> right, like food and money. You know, one of my, besides physical orgasms, one of my greatest forms of pleasure is freaking business and creation, Mm -hmm. and money, and talking, and I mean, talk about possibilities, talking about possibilities, and and talking about, like, how can I poke the bear, (laughs) right, (laughs) on everyone, and, and really even my own, like, how can I poke the bear on my own self imposed limitation on pleasure? Yes, that's a great one. How can right? you? <laughs> so, and that could be different every right. day too, right? Yeah. And that can be different love- every day. So if there's an area of, you know, someone's life where they're really struggling with going beyond, like let's say somebody it only makes, say, $100 a day and they want to start making $200 a day, but every day they wake up and they hit their limitation and then their mind goes into, oh, that's enough, Right. It's like getting to that place of going, all right, what would it take to make $110 today? Can I go beyond that? And then the next day, what would it take to make 120 right? Ooh, what would it take to make 150 And you just keep, like, little tiny, like, breaking through the ceiling. So you don't have to go from zero to 1,000 in one day. Now, you can if you're Melissa, who likes that challenge, <laughs> but you can go you from, like you know, 100 to 110, 100 to 150, 100 to 175, whatever that is for you in a way that your body gets used to breaking through the threshold. And what I'll say about the body is every time you break through the threshold, you literally rewire your neurotransmitters to see the world differently. That's so freaking true. That's it's an amazing yeah. our so, brain is so amazing. And it can create those loops that will keep you in those limitations, that'll keep you at the I can only have a hundred dollars a day. And yeah, that new those new neural connections, as soon as your body's like, Oh, hundred and ten dollars, it's like there's a whole new pathway in your brain that's like, oh, I can take the hundred and ten dollar pathway. Oh, I can take the ten thousand dollar pathway. It's it's interesting because all of those pathways are in our brain. All those neural connections are there that are creating those thoughts. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, which which one are you going to go down today? Which one are you going to choose? They're all there. They're all available. Even the making ten million dollars a day. So we're talking about having nine so called ninety percent of our brain that we don't even use. Like how much of that has pathways to possibilities that we've never explored or. Um, you know, possible neural connections that could, you know, not only like break the idea of a glass ceiling or a ceiling of any kind, but that like literally uh, obliterates all limitations. Kind of like the Lucy movie. When I saw that, I was so, oh, my body was so lit up. Uh, Not the end part, but the whole idea of tapping into like all of your possibilities, physical, um, all your capacities, it's so exciting to me to even consider having a new having a new thought what that will create for you having a new neural connection what that can create for you uh, like I'm excited I just get really excited talking about it so totally yeah I dare I dare every one of you to just have a crazy crazy outrageous freaking you know we'll say a thought you know tomorrow um, like Catherine is saying go from your your you know, self-imposed um, limitation of $100 a day or whatever that limitation is, uh, even just incrementally um, see see what you can choose to break that, to break into a whole new neural connection that'll be like, wow. I, in the last few months, my body and brain have created new neural connections that I'm really, like, loving watching. I'm like, wow, my body's willing to receive more money than, um, like, for example, in, in September, I, I think I, 
I was my body was willing to 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 receive more money in one month than I had received the entire first year my daughter was uh, born. So the first year of her life. And I was like, wow, it was so interesting to me to look at how much in eight years, uh, so she's nine now, but it was for her whole first year of her life, I had made uh, like, it was like poverty, right? And I was like, wow, I chose to create that. And I chose something completely new in my like thoughts and my energy and my choosing to have something totally different. It's so exciting. And I'm like, wow, if I can create that, what else can I create? What else can I have? What else am I willing to receive? Ah, it's so exciting. So I dare any of you, I know if I could come from uh, literally be below poverty level um, and to like have ease I have, like, ease in my life now, in my body and in my... I don't go to bed worrying about my bills now, but I used to do that, right? And I'm like, I, and it's just fun. Now I'm like, hey, who would like to be worked on? Where before it was like, oh, my God, I require clients. I require something, or I'm going to have to work at McDonald's or something. I don't know. And, like, going mental, right? So it's uh, it's really fun. And and to me, too, like, people who have ever had, um, you know, financial abundance in their life they have those neural connections they're there those those the knowing of what it's like to have money is present in your body so i wonder um and to have even more than what you had before especially if you've like had it and then gotten rid of it like i wonder if you can go to that play that same place of like oh there was this threshold then i eliminated it people with millions or whatever and then they get rid of it um i wonder you know, can we can we go into those parts of our brain and literally like ask it to create beyond that? Like, hey, neural connection. You know, that's that limitation isn't working for me anymore. So let's try a new pathway. What can we open up today? I'd just like to see what could be created for people that they're they're not even um, they didn't even maybe even know that they could choose uh, or you know they think oh. I can't do that. You can do that, but I can't do that. And man, I'm I'm stubborn in so many ways. Like man, I, I and and the queen of conclusions for sure. And curi- um, both have conclusions and curiosity, which is hilarious <laughs> and awareness. But I would say ten years ago, I was definitely the queen of conclusions. I'll never have that. Nobody will ever want to be with me. I have a child now. Who would want to date somebody with a kid, right? I had a lot of conclusions about what I could never have. And um, it's amazing when you start to even creep the thought. It's like just creep it. Like you would creep somebody on Facebook. Creep the thought and see, hey, what would it look like if I could actually choose that? Would I be willing to? So creep those. Yeah, and... I mean, I've found that the probably the quickest way to not indulge in the limitation and rewire the brain, right, is is literally to to not indulge in any level of judgment. So we talk about the pleasure of possibilities. We talk about rewiring the brain. The quickest way to wire the brain towards lack, towards limitation, you know, and hence why, why I've developed this crazy concept called the no judgment diet, right? Which a lot of people mm-hmm. look at the word and go, oh, it's a diet. And I'm like, no, it's a lifestyle to challenge you to look at everywhere you think judgment is real versus judgment just being a choice, right? And so this rewiring that you're talking about, the the, the quickest way to not rewire is to judge you, to judge that things aren't possible, to judge that you may, you know, and it's like the pleasure, no one wants to sleep with somebody who's judging the crap out of them. Nobody. So true. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so true. So why would your creations want to contribute to you if you're judging them? Why would your creations want to contribute pleasure to you if you are hurling judgments at them? Why would your body want to contribute to pleasure on every level, right? 
Yeah, indulging in more pleasure and less judgment. So judgment literally is the only thing in consciousness, <laughs> right? And actually judgment like consciousness includes everything and judges nothing so the one thing that will stop consciousness that will stop contribution that will stop pleasure that will stop possibilities is judgment and i think we forget right because for me the 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 no judgment diet and i'm so excited to come to toronto and edmonton and hawaii and so much often is it's basically three days of having everybody look at where they actually are stopping the possibilities of their life with the judgments they don't even know they're choosing. Yeah. And and right. And, and judge and it's the judgments we don't know we're choosing are the ones we could go to psychotherapy all we like and talk about our issues that we know we know are up in our face, but what about the ones that we don't even know are in our face? Well, and and if you want to, it, which I love, because I could literally spend like 10 hours talking just about what you just said, which is like, <laughs> okay, so the things we don't even know are the are the judgments that are stored hidden in our body and our body keeps acting out the limitation, but we don't, we can't access it through verbal communication. of the time, the judgments that are keeping us stuck from having the pleasure, from out-creating, from having the million or the 10 million or the 100 million or the private jet or the traveling wherever in the world or the 100 orgasms instead of three, right? Those, like, limitations are literally hidden in the body and they don't have, 99% of the time, they don't have a verbal form. So, you know, mm-hmm. you've asked me a lot about this, these three-day live events that I'm doing. We tap in to the nonverbal form <laughs> that is hidden in the body that you don't even know is hidden. But the only way you do know that it's hidden is you look at what you want in your brain and then you look at what's actually occurring in your life and we dive into the gap, right? The gap in the body that you don't even know is there. And for me, like, Freaking that exciting. is the most pleasurable thing I can think of, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's so <laughs> Getting to the gap. Oh, I love that. And when I work with people that, and when I, and I'm aware that when you work with people, that is what it is, right? You're, so it's the judgments hidden in the body and it's getting into the gap and facilitating the body to then go, oh, and have an awareness and change it. It's it's for me. It's one of one of my greatest pleasures is to watch bodies have the awareness and then change stuff. It's like it's as probably orgasmic to me as like giving a blowjob. It's it's top notch for sure. It's it's so <laughs> odd. It invigorates me and it excites me. So yeah, when I saw you're coming, I'm like I'm going to that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and and so and then I'm not unique in this, and neither are you, right? It's it, we might have more experience in it, but we all of us actually perceive bodies all the time. We all do it. It's it's it, we can't not do it. It's what we it's what we what we do as bodies. It's like what we do because we have embodiment. We perceive bodies, and you know we might perceive their judgments and not be aware of it. It's getting to the place of awareness and being you know having that so that we can go oh i'm aware oh i don't have to hide this anymore right and that's to me what the gift of of your classes is to be working with the bodies in that way i think i said to you i was like are do do we get to do body work and you were like hmm kind of and i'm like no i get what you're saying it's body work in a different way (laughs) i get that and very uh well and that's you know because as a body worker we're prone to look at other bodies right but what actually occurs is people come and they get to start to become aware of how their body contributes to facilitating them into greater possibility so what we do for these three days is is literally (laughs) play 
with the possibilities that the body is aware of before the being might know, right? So when when people like get aware of their own way that their body's like, ooh, that one, ooh, turn left, ooh, go to that class, ooh, talk mm-hmm. to that person, that's the body's way of constantly facilitating. And, you know, in this reality, we weren't always taught that the body is, at least from my point of view, the body in conjunction with an aware being is one of the greatest resources to create a future that you can't yet see. Oh, yeah. That is a great one. Can somebody write that? <laughs> I'm sure that was great. That's a great line. And I, I can my, rephrase it. So, yeah. 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 Like the body is basically a a catalyst and a source right? Yes. In conjunction with an aware being, the body and an aware being can literally facilitate creating greater possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And so (laughs) my kind of question that I would leave with everyone is, I know we're not done just yet, but to leave with everybody is what does your body know? What does your body know about future and using your body as the resource to create future that you haven't yet acknowledged. Because mm. bam, mm. the bodies are so aware. <laughs> using your body to create future. That is a great one for, um, you know, a lot of people will ask the question, what will my life be like in five years? Well, a lot of people that I know <laughs> will ask that question, what will my life be like in five years, ten years, fifteen? And including body in that, you know, the future with your body, you know. I think that question can can be enhanced with what body, what future would you like to have in the next five years, ten years, fifteen years? There's one thing is like the being um, and the being coexisting with uh, this experience with embodiment is a little, yeah. it's a little different question. So, yeah. Well, and guess what stops that awareness of future or even the facilitation of future is judging your freaking body. And most people, right, right, the statistic is less than 4% of people on the planet consider themselves be- beautiful. So, people judging their bodies actually stops them from creating the future that they and their bodies are aware of. I love that. So what stops you from creating your future is the judgment of your body. You guys didn't hear that. I'm going to say it again. What stops you from creating your future is the judgment of your body. You have that on t-shirts, right, Catherine? <laughs> no, freaking, I'll have to bring them to Edmonton. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And Toronto, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but they might be sold out by Edmonton and we just get a new batch. <laughs> That's great. We'll just get a new batch. Um, Amen. <laughs> so um, we've got one minute and 30 seconds left to go, and I'd like to give that time over to you to talk about um, your creations, whether it's the No Judgment Diet umbrella or anything you're creating on in the planet and what's coming up for you um, in the immediate uh, future. I would say come to Canada. Come play with Melissa <laughs> and Jonathan and Darlene and all these and Christine and all these amazing people. Come to Canada. It's three days of truly magic and creating your future. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, but – but it's a diet. I'm like, no, it's a way of getting out of judgment with your body. So I would just say, come, come play. And, you know, thank you to Melissa and to Inspired Choices and Christine and all of you for having me. I adore you guys. And, you know, thank you, Melissa, for your magic and contribution. Well, we adore you too, Catherine, and we're super looking forward to, oh, well, I look forward to squeezing your butt in person. I'm um, like, the countdown is starting now. <laughs> Yeah, baby. (laughs) Thank you for listening, guys.
Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Milica Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.